Through fear of Allah, you find his justice. You find your security and you find your comfort with him subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the just and most merciful. So run away to Allah. Brothers and sisters, if you don't run away, run away to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will come into the picture and he will give you four stages of reminders. So I'm going to conclude now with how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes into your life and gives you four stages of waking you up. He won't let you go astray because every salat you are reciting, Al-Fatiha, Ihdina, As-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. Don't you ask Allah this every salat? Oh Allah, guide us to the right path. Since you asked Allah to guide you in the right path every single salat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let you go astray. But he'll go through four stages. When a person begins to drift away from Allah, or not even that. Sorry, when a person drifts away from Allah, and sometimes doesn't even drift away, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make you even better. He calls you through four stages. In other words, Allah gives you da'wah. Da'wah means an invite. Allah invites you back through four ways. The first way is the easiest way that is for everybody. Every single one of us in this room and around the world gets this first stage for free. The first stage that Allah goes through is He shows you and clarifies to you the guidance by exposing you to opportunities to listen or to read or send someone to you to remind you such as the khutbah on a Friday. Everyone can sit down and listen to the khutbah. That's why we must not talk or engage with anybody during the khutbah on a Jumu'ah. Allah is guiding you. Just listen. Everybody can do that. You go on YouTube and you listen to a topic of your choice about Islam or Deen or fear of Allah. Everybody can do that. Who is the one that facilitated this for you? Humans invented it, but who is the one that gave them the intellect and for you the ears to listen? Allah. So Allah brings to you something like that. I've heard young people tell me, you know what, subhanAllah, today I was thinking about this. I opened up my phone and on YouTube, what's the first thing that came up? This, subhanAllah, wallahi, this is a sign. Yes, it is a sign. Sometimes all week you'll be talking with your friends about something or thinking about something and the khutbah comes. The Jumu'ah, you sit down, you go, oh my Allah. This Imam is speaking about the same thing I was thinking about all week. It's a sign. Sometimes you'll be going and you see this religious sister or brother coming your way. You want to run away because then you're going to think it's the Haram police or something like that. The shaitan starts telling you all this stuff, right? But then they follow you even if you don't like it and you try to be respectful and they remind you about something and they go away. Allah has sent you a messenger. Don't worry about their, whether they were nice or not nice. A strong person is able to sift through that. So Allah sends you free guidance. Now, if that doesn't work for you and you continue to go astray, Allah then goes, he, he guides you through a little bit of a tougher approach. The second stage, He will nurture you through disciplining you. So first, you didn't take the reminder when you were comfortable. So then Allah nurtures you by disciplining you. Now I want you to think about discipline in relation to parents, someone who cares about you. If your mother or father discipline you or you discipline your children, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Of course, with the correct way of disciplining, with care and compassion. You will appreciate that your parents disciplined you in order for you to be principled through care and love. Even sometimes it may be harsh for you, such as confiscating your phone or confiscating your whatever is distracting you. So Allah nurtures you through discipline. How? He will bring a problem into your life. He will bring what? A problem, a challenge into your life. And we all know that humans learn best through what? Through problems. When you learn maths, how do you become a good math mathematician? Isn't it through problems? Call them problems because once you get through that problem, you're going to feel amazing. You conquered that problem. So Allah gives you a problem. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa dealt with all the prophets and messengers and the companions. So if you have a problem, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding you. Take it in a good way. Now, that problem is going to be your medicine. And once you overcome it, inshallah, you're going to be much stronger and better. So Allah gives you a problem, a learning curve. A wake-up call. Somebody might get sick in your family. A death may happen and you attend a funeral. You may see somebody get run over. You may have an accident, God forbid. You may lose something. You may be tested a lot or a little bit, depending on how severe you need that guidance. Then if that doesn't work, Allah will intensify a little bit more to the third stage. The third stage is He will bring you something compelling. The problem is up to you how you want to face it. But when He brings you something compelling, it means it's something that you must face. You have no way to avoid it. You have to face it. It could be a court order. It could be a fine. It could be someone that's facing you and you have to deal with that. You can't run away from it. It could be anything like that. It could be a sickness, God forbid. Anything like that is compelling. A suffering and a minor punishment. Allah says, And we shall surely let them taste a little bit of punishment 
or a little bit of hardships in this world. And Allah calls it adna, which means the lower test before the bigger test, the bigger punishment comes. Why? Allah says, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ In the hope that they will return. So why are little punishments happening to you in this world? In the hope that you may what? Return. So you can stand up again. If that doesn't work, no reminders, no problems, no compelling situations over and over and over and they accumulate and we decide to run away from Allah to everything else to numb our desires and our fears, drugs, alcohol, crime, God forbid, haram images, haram relationships. I hear of some youngsters, they run away from their parents into a relationship. This is toxic. Uh, the first guy that talks to her says, I can't wait to get out of this toxic family. I hate my dad, I hate my mum. And then she runs off with the first guy who says, I want to run away, take me away, thinking he's, he's her Jannah. He ain't your Jannah, darling. And then she has a toxic relationship there. No, 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 run to Allah first so Allah's mother can help you. I, I know I just picked on our sisters. I'll pick on the brothers as well. A brother goes through problems and then he wants someone to mummy him. He's got problems with his mum. So he goes on the internet, tries to shop around for the easiest target. How old are you? Oh, are you 17? Sweet, sweet. Because 17 is like good. That's, that's, that's good enough. You see a 14 year old. How old are you? I'm 14. Oh, sweet, sweet. What are they after? They go to their mates and they say, look, look, I picked her up. Oh man, bro, you're, you're, you're a champion. Show us how to do it. These people have got problems and we need to nurture them. We need to nurture them. No brother and sister, don't go after that in order for you to try and fulfill that little gap that you might have. That's going to lead you astray. But anyway, after all these three stages, if nothing works and the reminders come again and again, the catastrophe happens. And I'm going to finish it with this. Do you know what the catastrophe is? What do you think the catastrophe is? If all the reminders come to the person and the person does not wake up and return, what is the catastrophe that Allah brings you? You might think death, sickness, Allah's going to send a lightning bolt, a lightning uh, on you. Someone's going to murder you. Someone's going to go from your family. Something terrible is going to happen. You're going to lose your business. No, 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 no. None of that is going to be the catastrophe. You'll be surprised to know that the final catastrophe will be Allah just lets you go. Do whatever you want. Make as much money as you want. Fulfill your every piece of desire that you ever wanted. So Allah lets you go to the dunya, to your desires, to everything. We do not want to reach that stage because that means that Allah is no longer with us. He has abandoned us because we abandoned him. And the only thing we'll receive is a temporary ugly world and even the world will turn against you. As for the hereafter, there'll be nothing left. And that's why Allah says, and do not be like those who forgot Allah. So Allah made them forget who they are. These are truly the ones who are corrupt. But rather, we want to be among those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and we love Him. And inshallah, we get the best of both worlds here and in the hereafter, inshallah. Say Ameen. Jazakumullahu khair. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.